how long should you treat SIBO for? Hi, this is Dr. Ruscio, and if you're a patient that's been diagnosed with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which can typically manifest as the symptoms of IBS, um, limited, uh, including but not limited to gas, bloating, either constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain, um, then you may be wondering what the ideal treatment length is. Now, there are different treatment options, Two of the most uh, most used, I guess you could say, would be pharmaceutical antibiotics or herbal antimicrobials. And a recent study actually gives us some very valuable information in guiding how long to use the antibiotic rifaximin in the treatment of uh, SIBO. And uh, this was um, a study predominantly looking at those with SIBO that had a um, IBSD or a, a, an IBS diarrheal type presentation. So <clears throat> in short, what this study showed was that the higher one's lab values may predict the longer need for treatment duration on this antibiotic. Now more specifically, these researchers tracked a large group of patients and the patients ended up being on either four weeks eight weeks or 12 weeks of rifaximin. Now typically rifaximin prescription is written for a two week duration. So this is definitely quite a bit longer than, than uh, is typically recommended. However, this is also a, a drug being used in a new application. So I still think we have much to learn. So instead of the typical two weeks, these researchers found that the higher level of severity of the SIBO uh, test, the SIBO breath test, that predicted if one would need rifaximin for four weeks, for eight weeks, or even as long as 12 weeks. Now, um, this I think provides us a few important things. Um, one is the personalization of the dose. And I think that's probably the most practical here is uh, what we wanna try to do is, is use a, a duration of treatment that's going to have the highest likelihood of success. Not too much, not too little. Now, there's another interesting finding from this study, which was that patients' symptoms tended to improve before the labs improved. And why I think this is important is because it, it points to something that I think is a very important part of the clinical process, which is sometimes left out of modern-day medicine or modern-day healthcare, which is really having a um, strong concern for the way a patient is responding to treatment. What this study again showed was that a patient will start to respond symptomatically before their labs improve. And so this may suggest that uh, you know, using the patient response to dictate the length of treatment and the retesting interval may be important. Um, I should note that the, the most significant symptomatic response on the antibiotic was seen at four weeks. So again, this, this at most conservative supports that perhaps using rifaximin for longer than two weeks, four weeks, would be a intelligent strategy because it, it did appear that uh, the most significant benefit was achieved at four weeks. Um, and there's one other an, an interesting point from this study which was that someone's severity of symptoms did not correlate with the severity of the labs. And I think this is important to mention because uh, people can have problems in the gut, or, or I should maybe say this way, a problem in the gut could manifest as many different types of problems for, for different people and also different severities of problems. So it's important, I think, to keep this in mind where um, my personal opinion is that a problem in the gut can manifest in many different ways and this is why it's a, a important thing to evaluate digestive health before uh, other considerations and what this study is showing is that uh, the severity of SIBO may not always correlate with uh, the symptom severity. So someone may have a very mild case of SIBO but very severe symptoms or very severe SIBO but very mild symptoms. So. Um, this study provides some very uh, interesting information. I think the, the biggest takeaway is that we may want to rethink or at least consider a longer duration of rifaximin use in the treatment of SIBO, especially if a patient has a very high gas level on breath testing. 
So uh, this is Dr. Ruscio. Hopefully this information helps you get healthy and get back to your life. Thanks.